Hi, AT from CNC at home. Yes, there's another wedding coming up, and uh, you're going to get some coasters. Of course, they're custom coasters to the, uh, the couple's interests. I've gone through and pulled in a few images that, uh, that should match their interests. I know the groom much better. It's somebody that's uh, a friend of my son's, and his parents are friends of ours, so we've known them for several years. So that part's easy. I did some investigating in on the bride's interests and found out a few things so I can make some coasters that will apply to her as well. To start with, let's go ahead and open up the template. There's my 108 millimeter square template. And let's just uh, get an image on here. Here's one of the images. The groom is currently going to school for aviation, aviation mechanics to be a missionary. And this is an exploded view of a the Haviland Beaver, which is a fairly well-known bush plane. But I thought this would make a great coaster. The first thing I'm going to do is see how well this works if I convert this into vectors. So I'm going to right click, come down here and choose trace image. Let's take a look at this. Now overall this looks fairly well. There are a few things I don't like, uh, for instance the windshield is having trouble with, which is not unexpected. A little trouble with some of the stuff on the tire, but overall this isn't bad. Let's take a look at it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and delete the image once it's done. Yeah, that's not too bad. It's doing a fill versus we look at it just as lines. You know, the lines look pretty good too. I think the fill looks better. We shrink this down to coaster size this will probably work pretty well let's shrink it down we'll fly it down here onto our coaster right in the center let's zoom in on this we'll need to shrink this up just a little bit i have the center position selected so as i shrink this it will shrink around the center simple as that so that'll be a good coaster. Let's go ahead and save this. Save as. Let's try another one. Open our template again. Start with that and grab another image. Here's an image that I had found. Uh, it's kind of funny, it has this checkerboard background. When I found the image, I guess assumed that it was a transparent background. Obviously not. So we'll definitely do a trace image on this. That looks good. That looks really good. And it definitely... Yeah, it looks better filled. We just need to shrink this up a little bit and get it to fit. We'll shrink this down. Let's try about 105 millimeters. Get that centered up in our work area. You notice how that just snaps into place? When I get close to the center of my construction lines, it'll snap to the center of that if I'm dragging from the center of my image. We'll zoom in here. Kind of close to the edges, and that's just fine because we want it to take up a lot of space. So here's another good one. Go ahead and save that. I really should set my burn parameters. I'm going to be doing this on the uh, ZRC coated tiles. We'll just apply the burn parameters that I use there, and then we'll save this. Come down here and do save as. Let's go grab an image. The 
The groom is interested in mountain biking. He and my son have done quite a bit of that over the years. My son actually bought one of his uh, mountain bikes. My son's first you know, real decent mountain bike. Get this centered up. I'll zoom out a little bit so we can see. There's quite a bit of white space, which is fine. We don't care about that. We'll just go ahead and enlarge this. That looks pretty good. Let's just get that orange line on top so we can see it. Could go a little bit bigger yet. There. That should work pretty well. And if we want to, and we don't really need to, but we could select the image and then our work area, and we could tell it to apply a mask, and then it would not uh, try to burn any of this white area. It shouldn't anyway, because it's white. Um, we can do that though, just to make sure. We could try doing this as a vector. I don't think it's going to work well as a vector. If we zoom in, you can see there's so many little dots and pixels on this particular image that as a vector, it's, it's really not gonna work so well. So I'm going to leave it as an image. And again, we'll um, want to apply our image parameters, which basically are the same. It's just when we look at this, it'll be set as an image. And we're using Jarvis dithering as our default. That looks good. Let's go ahead and save this one. And open up our template once again. Let's see if we have another image to pull in. Here's an image that I had found that I thought would uh, work fairly well with its Christian symbolism. Let's go ahead and convert this to vectors. We'll do trace image. That'll help us get rid of some of those watermarks. Pretty straightforward, that looks good. Click OK. And we'll need to end up shrinking that up a little bit. I don't know quite how much yet. That snap to the center. And we'll just shrink it till it fits nicely. Go ahead and see this a little closer. That looks nice. We'll go ahead and go with that. Let's save this one. Oop, well, let's set the parameters. It's like it's still set. Okay, we don't need to set those because they're already set. Let's go ahead and save as. You might wonder about the choices of images so far. They seem to be more groom-centric than bride-centric, and that's true because I know the groom better. One of the ones that I'm going to do uh, for the bride is one that I've done before, and it's a reading one. Let me go grab that and pull it up so you can see what I'm going to do. Here's an image that I had done for a prior wedding that we had gone to. This burned nicely, and so I'm going to burn this again. I do need to change the parameters. I had burned this using the white paint method, and I want to convert this to use the cold galvanizing compound method. We'll go ahead and apply our parameters and hopefully it'll turn out just as well. We just do a save as and we'll give it a slightly different name for uh, this new wedding. We've done five coasters. I really should do another one that is more bride centric. The bride does like being outdoors. She likes flowers uh, and especially tulips. So I'm going to go find a nice image of tulips and uh, we'll get that on here. I'll start by opening up my template and then uh, do a little searching on Google and I'll be right back with an image. Here's a nice image of tulips that I found. 
kind of zoom in on this, take a look. Again, there's a lot of detail. I don't think doing an edge trace is going to do this justice. Let's try it, see what it looks like. Trace image. Not too bad, let's take a look. Now well, I guess I have to tell it to do it. Let's try that again, actually click OK. There we go. That looks pretty good. I like it. We just take this and pop it down into the corner, zoom down here, get this centered up in our template area. There we go. And we'll just shrink her down until it fits nicely. That looks like a good size. All we have to do is make sure our parameters are set. For vectors, and we'll save as. Now that that's saved, we have six coasters ready to burn. The next step will to be uh, lay those out and get those burning on the laser. I might just get radical and burn all six at one time. As a reminder, if you like this video and the content that we do, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That helps our Google Analytics. I have this set up to burn four tiles. First thing that I typically do is make sure that the burn is going to take place on my material. So I press the frame button and the laser goes around the outside perimeter and everything is set. And we are burning these on the cold galvanizing compound. So this should turn out pretty well, given the uh, testing that we've done before and the other burns that we've done. Here we have the four images. They look pretty good. Let's take them out to the garage and get that cleaned up. Start with the airplane. We'll just take some lacquer thinner and pour that on here. That'll cut through the paint uh, very quickly, actually. And we can just wipe that away. It turned out that there was something not quite right. The black ended up washing right off when I did these. There was very little that was left back on the tile. I had not really run into this before and I was curious as to what was going on. I thought maybe it was a fluke with the airplane. As you can see, virtually none of the airplane stayed on here. So we'll try it with the uh, spike cross. Pour some lacquer thinner on it. Scrape some of that off, and then we'll take a towel and wipe that clean. Turns out the same thing happened. So something's not working quite right. I did eventually figure out what was going on, and I reburned the tiles, and they all turned out fairly nicely. I'll do another video and walk through that process. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up and click on that subscribe button and enjoy doing your CNC at home projects.